Tucson is known for its immense number of hiking trails with some really diverse scenery and microclimates. There are so many different hikes to do here, it's kind of overwhelming when trying to decide on just one trail. If you're visiting or if you're new to Tucson and hiking is your passion, we have a list to at least get you started. Ranging from easy to hard and desert to forest, kid-friendly to strenuous, we have a trail for everyone. And in this video, I'm going over eight great hikes in Tucson, Arizona, popular with both locals and tourists alike. Before I list the hikes, I just have some warnings for all hikers. First, be very, very careful with any hikes you do during monsoon season. Whether you're in a canyon or on a mountaintop, monsoon storms can be very dangerous and can come out of nowhere. To learn more about monsoon season, please check out our video on surviving monsoons. Also, in the summertime, be aware of extreme heat and sun exposure. Finally, bring plenty of water when hiking in Tucson. Always, year round, we are a dry climate and you may find yourself needing to drink more water than what you're used to. Hey everyone, it's Kimberly, your go-to real estate agent here in Tucson, Arizona, and today we are talking about hiking trails. But first, comment below if you have a favorite Tucson hiking trail and don't forget to hit the like and the subscribe button to follow along with Tucson news and learn more about things to do and see and know about this city, my hometown. And when you're ready to buy or sell a Tucson home, all my contact information is in the description below each video on the channel. And please check out any of the other over 100 videos on this channel about Tucson and real estate. Okay, let's get to the list. These hikes are listed in no particular order, but make sure to watch to the end because we saved the most challenging hike for last. Number eight, Bridal Wreath Falls. This 5.7 mile out and back trail snakes its way through Saguaro National Park East and is a gradual uphill climb. There is a 1,095 foot of elevation gain, so it's a fairly moderate hike when it comes to difficulty. The trail starts in prototype Sonoran Desert in the midst of a cactus forest with some really beautiful saguaros. Then you start your uphill climb where in no time you get some amazing views of Tucson in the distance. As you ascend, into the Rincon Mountains, you reach grasslands and slightly forested areas until you reach the main attraction. The falls are tucked back into a rock face and a really gorgeous one running. I would suggest timing the hike a day or two after a nice spring or winter shower when the skies are clear to make sure you will see the falls at their best. Number seven, let's switch gears and go into the Tucson Pine Forest atop the Santa Catalina Mountains at Mount Bigelow. This is a shorter hike at 1.9 miles out and back, but with interconnected trails, you could make it longer if you wanted to. When people think Tucson, they usually think desert, but the high elevation and cooler temperatures of the Catalina Mountains is home to a beautiful pine forest, and that's what you get on this trail. 590 feet of elevation gain gets you up to the second highest peak in the mountain range. Up here, you can take in the mountain breeze and far off Tucson Valley. I like to do this hike in the early summertime to take advantage of the cooler temperatures on the mountain along with the change of scenery. Number six, let's move out west to Star Pass and Yetman Trail Loop. Who doesn't like a good loop trail? This 3.3 mile trail is in the Tucson Mountains and it gives you great views to the west toward Avra Valley and to the east down into the Tucson Valley. There's only a 337 foot of elevation gain on this one, so it won't be too strenuous. The Sonoran Desert here has a different feel from the east side of Tucson since the Tucson Mountains are are volcanic in origin. The landscape has a reddish hue and the mountains are just gorgeous. This is a hike best done before it gets too warm outside because you are very exposed. Number five, back over to the east side of town is one of the most popular places to hike in town and certainly one of my favorites and that is Sabino Canyon. The main road itself is paved so it's great for people with strollers or things like that but I don't believe pets are allowed and cycling is only permitted certain days, so check the website first. The paved road is closed off to public vehicles, so you park in the parking lot first, and then you have the option of hiking the easygoing 7.4 mile out and back hike with 734 feet of elevation gain, or you can take the tram part way or all the way if you just want a fun tour. The Deep Cut Canyon is a beautiful microclimate with lush vegetation. Sabino Canyon has water running almost year-round 
around and there are a lot of beautifully crafted stone bridges and ponds to have a nice picnic by. I really like this hike any time of the year except monsoon season. Number four, while we're talking about Sabino Canyon, let's talk about what is probably Tucson's most famous hike and that's Seven Falls. This is a moderate out and back hike of 8.3 miles. Seven Falls is accessed through Bear Canyon, which you can get to from the Sabino Canyon Visitor Center. You will definitely want to bring your water shoes for this hike. There are many, many water crossings that you can't get around if you are going on this hike. I suggest you leave early because sometimes this trail can be really slow going, but it's definitely worth it. You can also take the Sabino Canyon tram to shorten this hike to just under five miles. The cascading falls are just gorgeous. People love to sunbathe and play in the water. Number three, one of our favorite picnic and hiking sites is Marshall Gulch. The Marshall Gulch Trail is 2.6 miles out and back and follows Marshall Gulch Creek up 534 feet to a lookout point as you can see the gulch below as well as the Push Ridge Wilderness to the south and west. This is an easy hike that kids love and enjoy. There's a wonderful lush canopy above to shade you from the sun along with the serenity of the babbling creek. This is a good place to cool down in the summer months but get there early because this area is very popular and parking close to the trailhead can at times be a challenge. Number two, Bug Springs is an often overlooked and underrated hike in my opinion. I think the intimidation factor is that it is ranked as hard on all trails and is 9.4 miles in length. The trick to this hike is that if you're hiking with two or more people, you can leave a car at each end of the trail and make a go one way. I recommend starting at the upper Bug Springs area because most of the hike will be downhill. The first half mile start from the top is brutal, but the rest is mostly downhill. You get some great wooded areas with many small spring crossings, followed by a gentle downslope along the ridge line. Here you get up close and personal with hoodoos and beautiful sweeping mountain views. One way is only 4.6 miles and there's a hidden sunset spot on this hike that is truly magical. The hardest hike, but probably the most spectacular one on this list, is located in the Santa Rita Mountains just south of Tucson. Mount Wrightston is the tallest peak in all of the mountains surrounding the Tucson Valley area. This hike has an intense elevation gain of 4,000 feet over 5.8 miles one way. That makes this hike a total of 11.6 miles. This is a very difficult hike even if you're in really good shape. You can take the super trail as well to make it an even more challenging hike at 13.1 miles loop, which is what my husband did. The backside of the mountain has beautiful fields of wildflowers if you can catch it at the right time. Jagged rocks linger in the distance as you climb on switchbacks to the highest peak around Tucson at 9,361 feet above sea level. This summit will treat you to some amazing views into Green Valley, Sahuarita, and Tucson. Off in the distance, you can see the Fred Whipple Observatory, just a really cool place to hike to. This this is not a winter hike as the weather can be unpredictable. Early fall or late spring would be when we would plan this hike. It's also a good idea to train and be ready physically for this hike. I hope you've learned a little bit about some of the hiking trails Tucson has to offer. We will be coming out with more videos featuring more trails in the future, but of course, if you have a favorite that I left off this list, throw it down in the comments and I'll include it in the next one. If you're interested in buying or selling a home here in Tucson, Arizona, give me a call. I'd love to help you out. All my contact information is in the description below each video on this channel. And there are tons of other videos on this channel about things to do and see and know about this city, my hometown. Don't forget to like and subscribe on your way out the door. I appreciate you hanging out with me today and I will see you in the next Tucson video.